Welcome again, guys, for the second session of our next audio series event. After a first panel focusing on uh, what's happening in the podcasting business in Europe, the transformation of the market, we are now looking at what's happening in the digital audio in car landscape. And today for this session, we will talk about the transformation of uh, the digital audio experience in the car, the state of the regulations, the technical challenges, the evolution of the content offer. And in order to do that, we are gathering three of the major actors in this market from the tech side and from the aggregation side, starting with uh, Xavier Fiver from Radioline, Chief um, Operating Officer of the company, Ashish Mina from uh, iCar, the uh, Global iCar Ecosystem and Partnership Development Director for Huawei. And finally, last but not least, Daniel Zoklauer, from Arman International, who will talk about what they are doing in terms of ecosystem with Ignite platform. First of all, before starting with the more specific questions, uh, I would like to have a general overview of what you guys are doing in your businesses, starting with Xavier, for instance, what is doing Radioline in the audio in car landscape? So hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, Radioline is a 15 years company. Um, we started with Orange uh, and the live radio pro, pro, program. It was a Wi-Fi tuner, it was IoT. And uh, since we moved on, on mobile and then TV, connected TV, and we were waiting for so long that automotive uh, would be connected because automotive is exactly uh, the place where radio is a must have. Uh, it's cool on a mobile, but it's on the vehicle, it's a must have. So um, now I think, and we will discuss that, the landscape and the environment for developers like us is very important. Again, we are a global radio provider and we have the largest, world's largest database of radio and podcast. So as a global radio provider, the idea of this panel was also to gather some of your partners and talking about what you're doing in terms of partnerships to provide new audio customized solutions for the driver in the car. So Ashish, can you tell us a bit what you're doing for Huawei with the iCar ecosystems? Um, what is the idea behind? What are you providing for solution for OEM and for customers? Thank you, David. Yeah, so we are here uh, to join and support our partner Radio Line um, uh, for iCar. So iCar, what we are looking is, uh, a part of uh, vision uh, Huawei has, and it's called one plus eight plus N. And uh, the vision is all about uh, eight, uh, which are core Huawei uh, accessories devices, uh, including a smart speaker, smart watch, uh, for example, a smart TV. And then N is our partner ecosystem. So Hikar is part of the eight core uh, devices, let's say. It's a pure software solution. And it's like pretty much uh, in line with Android Auto and CarPlay, but actually it's more than that um, because it's not only a projection solution from your mobile phone to the car, but also a part of an ecosystem. So for example, um, today, Radio Line has implemented uh, Hikar, um, uh, the Radio Line radio aggregator app for Hikar. But at the same time, if a user has Huawei watch, uh, he can control uh, the radio stations and radio uh, volume up and down uh, through the watch as well. Uh, and also uh, the, the whole audio idea for Hikar is template based. So we control uh, the, the destruction part for the driver. It's very important for us that uh, while driving driver is not distracted. Um, so we use audio template uh, and uh, and the other important aspect for OEM is that the templates are customizable. So which means that uh, for branding and tailoring a template, there is a scope. Uh, so not all projection uh, in high card look exactly the same, you know? So OEM can differentiate their HMI, their infotainment system a little bit and brand it accordingly. Uh, accordingly. So in short, yes, uh, I'm, I'm limiting my scope for uh, audio only. And that's what we are doing. So we'll come back later to what are the issues regarding regulations and the customer and driver distractions. 
So Daniel, regarding Arman, you're about to launch your Ignat platform, which is uh, supposed to be agnostic and open to every content aggregator. Can you talk a bit more about that? What have been your journey through the audio in car landscape? And what are the solutions that Arman is providing both to consumer and to OEMs? Hello, thank you for having me. And yeah, basically, Harman is a tier one. We're working globally with uh, over 30, 36 OEMs. And the Ignite Store is basically a vehicle-centric platform, an app store that is connected, connecting customers with, uh, with their favorite uh, content. And we're also providing uh, the OEM a tool to strengthen the brand loyalty and uh, providing whatever they want in all this new digital era we are living in. Okay, so we'll come back later also to the state of the competition and uh, the uh, technology. So far, uh, if we talk about what are the main operating systems, we think about uh, Android Automotive with gas, we think about Linux too. How has evolved the complexity of the tech environment and how are you dealing with that? I'm starting with Ashish because you are dealing with OEM for a long time, especially in China. How did you see the market evolve from your point of view, both, for instance, comparing what's been happening in China versus what you're seeing now in Europe? Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, so in China, high car today is available almost on 30 plus OEM and I think 150 car models um, in China and uh, it will grow. So that's the OEM side. Um, and one of the challenge OEM has that in vehicle app gallery, for example, like gas is part of that in vehicle. And then there is an ecosystem of in vehicle apps on the phone side. So Huawei in general support both the uh, scenarios. Uh, then we, we over focus is the customer or the end user. And we want to facilitate the way he wants to use the apps through his phone or through in car uh, directly. So we support both. Huawei also have an ecosystem uh, through of the app. It's called App Gallery, which is pretty, pretty much like uh, Android um, uh, Play Store uh, or uh, Harman's Ignite. Um, so we have that uh, ecosystem there. And uh, in terms of adaptation, we found that because of our business model, uh, it's very win-win situation based. So we really cooperate with OEM and try to bring their uh, branding, their uh, way of uh, interacting with their own customers, which is a driver or a, a car user. And so we support that uh, in terms of uh, design and uh, for the audio uh, and navigation templates. And from your point of view, Xavier, as a content aggregator, you've been working with tens of thousands of uh, content owners from radio broadcasters to uh, streaming services or to players. How did you see the market evolve over the last years, especially regarding uh, the fact that most OEM wanted to have proprietary solution? Uh, was it a break for uh, developing the tech to integrate in each of them? And how has been evolving so far for you over the last year? And how did you see the market evolving from your point of view? Yeah, so... So basically, as, as you say, in the past, um, content providers or companies like Radio Line have been uh, developing solutions one-to-one. -one. one version for one specific OEM. And uh, Javier may, may tell you more about that, but that was for sure a nightmare. Uh, what's happening today is that you are using the App Store concept. It means that you develop once and you deploy to many. So the moment a content provider, radio line or, or any radio station develop an app on Android Automotive, they can do the certification, in this case with Ignite Store, we certify, we do all the automotive testing and the, app, and the app is basically approved to be used in the automotive world. The app is uploaded to a portal and from that portal, you develop it only once and any OEM that works with the platform can download it to the vehicles they want, to the regions they want, to the brands they want. So it, it has been an evolution since those times. And I can tell you that today, more than 60% of the OEMs are already committed to work with um, Android Automotive operating system. 
So, Gary, I wanted also to have your opinion on that, especially regarding uh, the relationships you have with your customers who are content owners. Uh, how did it ease for them uh, the integration in car? I know that you don't need to go through proprietary solutions anymore. Basically, oh, sorry. That for like Xavier this time. Oh, go ahead, please. So, yes, uh, we are coming from the IP world. So, uh, for a very, very long time, long period, OEMs was very broadcast oriented. Now it's changing and uh, they moved to proprietary solution, which was, which is a nightmare in every sector for, for developers because you need to develop, to update, uh, maintenance, etc. So this is very complex. So we were waiting for a standard solution. And I'm very happy today to have Ash and, uh, and Daniel because uh, our partner is proposing uh, um, a diversity, meaning that we, we need several environments, not many proprietary one, but several standard environments. That made the success of the mobile, not only for radio, but mobile exists and is very doing well because there is standard and developers can rely on that and updates, etc. So uh, <clears throat> Daniel is offering the best, I would say, store for Android automotive. <clears throat> so we are very happy with this partnership to have it selected because what Daniel uh, don't say that the QA is very demanding. So the green light for us, it was absolutely key and interesting. And it, it opens a wide range of OEMs because like you said, OEMs are, are turning to, to, uh, to this OS. But also it's important to see that Huawei is very big, is growing and uh, we want to be part of that because we need several big OS addressing uh, the car. And again, uh, we see the car was, uh, with the later solution was mobile to car, but now it's car as a mobile, which doesn't mean that you can do everything on your mobile while driving, it's just in the philosophy. So uh, Huawei and, uh, and uh, Ignite Store with uh, Android Automotive is in that strategy. It worked well uh, on, the, on the mobile side, so now it will be in the car. And uh, I think it's the beginning of something coming with of course the restriction, like in every environment, we don't do the same application for TV, for Android TV, for example, or HTML5 uh, in the car. So uh, each time we adapt the UX on the restriction, on the distraction, on many, many constraints to offer the best experience to the user. So we've been seeing some standardization, but there's also the idea of offering a customized experience for OEMs or for the final users. And in order to do that, you can both choose between uh, developing apps and mirroring the apps from mobile to car or working on deep integrations. Ashish, what's been the journey of Huawei so far? Because I believe that between what you're doing in terms of operation in China versus Europe, you are not proposing the same thing. In Europe, for instance, you are doing mirroring where you could also do some projection with the mobile. Can you elaborate a bit on that, what you're doing and what you're offering in terms of uh, technical solutions for the consumer and for the OEM? So when it comes to automotive, we have to understand it's uh, it, the, the, the overall it takes four to five years to bring a new product. First, it's highly regulated. Third, you know, updating software on the, on the car, it's not, very easy still, you know, the technology is evolving. So now when it point comes to uh, uh, updating apps through mobile, it's, it's still, uh, it's quite standardized and quite robust. So if you have an ecosystem of in-vehicle app through mobile, it's in favor of OEM. You know, they can still deploy a lot of services and a lot of new apps through the mobile for their user. So that's a fast, easy, safest way. When things are in the car, you know, uh, as an app gallery or as an uh, OS, uh, which is uh, Android Automotive, for example. Yeah, so there is always a, a element of maintenance if something goes wrong, you know, the upgradability. But of course, there is a both solution in vehicle app and on mobile in vehicle app uh, ecosystem has a strength uh, and value. So in Europe, um, what we are doing, I don't I don't know if you heard about Harmony OS uh, launched uh, uh, last few weeks ago. Um, and the idea of Harmony OS is pretty much like Android Automotive. Uh, but Harmony OS is designed for distributed computing from the beginning, cross scenario, cross device uh, interaction. For example, your smart home, smart health, 
So uh, for example, as simple as that, you have a smart home lights, you are high car uh, uh, connected with high car. And as soon as you go away from home, your smart home devices are home away mode, for example, certain device. So they can switch off, switch on uh, your lights, heating, uh, anything else, uh, security going uh, wrong or something happened, it alerts comes on their car while driving. So there are a lot of uh, cross scenario uh, uh, situation which will evolve as we go from electric vehicle to autonomous vehicle. So there is a wide range of application. Uh, so today we are focusing on auto, uh, audio uh, uh, application, entertainment and navigation. But in future, the, the, the scope of apps will grow. Hence the, hence the ecosystem, hence the, the, the app gallery or app stores. That's one part. In China, we are already uh, start doing Harmony OS uh, uh, trials with some OEMs for head unit, um, because in China, you don't have a Google ecosystem that is strong. So uh, you can understand the maps, the, the top apps, we have all of it. So in China, our position is much strong in that way. But in Europe, uh, yeah, we, uh, we have tied up some global OEMs which are launching car in China. And that's how we are building the relationship. And that's how in future we will work with them and bring the high car and harmony solution in, in, in Europe as well going forward. And we are actually co-developing this, uh, both high car and harmony OS, uh, a lot of aspect feature with, uh, with collaboration with OEM based on their requirement as well. And also we coming from a consumer, we coming from a mobile. So we know uh, what sort of apps and what sort of uh, services uh, uh, customers are looking for. So it's a good synergy we are trying to build uh, in Europe. Uh, we are in a pre-launch phase, let's say for high car in Europe, but it, that's the preparation going on. And in pre-launch, we, we are basically working and trying to work together with a lot of OEMs. And I wanted to go back to you, Daniel, um, following what Ashish was saying, both regarding the scope of the application available on Ignite, um, what are you aggregating so far in terms of application? You, probably you are doing audio applications, navigation applications. How do you plan to expand the offer? And first of all, can you tell us when you plan, for instance, to launch Ignite platform? Because I believe it's not already on the European market. Yeah, so, uh, so basically, basically the first launches uh, with Ignite will be towards the end of this year. And uh, in mid next year, we will see other um, uh, launches. But an, an interesting point here is that uh, content providers are, are used to the mobile world. And in the mobile world, they know that when they release an app, the next day they can see results and revenue. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and in the vehicle, in the automotive industry, it's very, very different because this is a new ecosystem. And actually the, the, the content providers need to have a very clear strategy that they are starting a new ecosystem, a new project, it's like a startup. So it will take some time till we will start seeing the volume. But when this happens, I'm sure that all the content providers will actually want to be on this ecosystem. Um, numbers say that uh, from the end of this year till 2025, there will be more than 172 million vehicles with Android Automotive uh, OS. Mm. For, for, for the mobile industry, this is a very small number. But when you think about vehicles, it's not one-to-one. -one. In a vehicle, you can have more than one person and more people listen, listening to this content. So it's a project that, that it's just starting. Later on, we'll grow for sure. And, and regarding the, the domains, yes, today audio is the main one. And uh, Google is also approving, um, a, you know, we all need to, to follow Google uh, guidelines in order to follow their templates. So they started with audio, they are doing something with messaging and then um, a navigation points of interest, uh, EV charging will be the next ones. And at the end, I believe that uh, that gaming and other type of entertainment uh, apps like video will, will be also relevant. So regarding the timeline, uh, as you said, much longer in the car than for developing mobile applications. Um, regarding this issue, Xavier, how have you worked, for instance, with content owners and car manufacturers in order to um, better implement the go-to-market services? For instance, can you elaborate more on 
what have been your journey with uh, Huawei? Because I believe that's been four years now that you've been partnering with them and you have not been doing only in-car solutions. Yeah, I think it's it's real meeting with with Huawei. Uh, we we met uh, on a on a very big show, uh, automotive show. We started with automotive, and what was surprising us is that we adapted our application in three weeks, three weeks, which means the support from Huawei was incredible. Never seen that. So uh, it's it's for us it, it for a developer you know it's saving time it's going further it was very good so based on this good success and we eventually won an award from uh, from Huawei as an outstanding partner at last uh, HDC so Huawei Developer Con Convention we we said okay I think that there is an ecosystem behind Huawei. And uh, maybe we can bring something because we have the same view. We are aligned on the strategy. We are on multiple devices. So the one plus eight plus N that can be maybe elaborate more by Ashish is absolutely online with us cross devices. It's online with uh, our strategy because we, we believe that the user journey will be more <coughs> easier if he can retrieve his point of listening of, of the, 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 the podcast, for example, or get his, his preference, his favorite, etc., his settings. So uh, we started to work on uh, on one uh, other device, which was uh, the basic watch, which was still related with uh, with the, the the phone, the mobile. And now we are working with a new version, with, with which is a, a watch on standalone. So it's another step of collaboration. So. Uh, Little by little, we, we see that it's possible to deploy our, our application on, on most of the devices, even IoT, it's possible. We have API access, so we can also address, uh, I would say, environment without the screen. And the other uh, element is, of course, China. We have one of the largest da database of content, Chinese content. The, support, the, the service is supporting Mandarin, Chinese language. So we are ready to jump to the administration level because you, have, you need a lot of authorization, but the, the aim is definitely to be there and maybe to be the, the, the first Western uh, uh, company, be there for, for content. And uh, of course, regulation is something very important there. So we're gonna work, we started to work with administration, but it's the next big step for Radiolink. This is something I wanted to ask you, Ashish, because uh, you're also working with uh, other European actors in order to help them enter the Chinese market. And uh, for you, what has been the journey of European actors so far to enter the Chinese market? How do you help them in terms of guidelines, in terms of regulations, in terms of tech to adapt their service to the Chinese consumers? What have been the main challenges so far? Yeah, so I think in audio, uh, entertainment content, you know, the censorship is there. That's the first thing. So it's not the same. Localization of data, uh, because um, the Chinese data has to be in China and European data has to be in Europe, that that's localization of data. Uh, and then, and so regulation, localization. So we, whenever we have a partner onboarding on Huawei uh, app ecosystem, um, for example, right, you know, we do help them from as a single point of uh, single window approach. So we take care in the back what regulations has to be met and how this app could be published uh, in an app gallery and also on high car ecosystem. So it's in the it's a part of the journey. It's a part of the process, and we do take care of that uh, part. That's the one thing. Other thing I would like to highlight, I think uh, we were talking about the content and collaboration when it comes to through the mobile ecosystem um, is the same. Uh, so localization of radio station, for example. So OEM makes a car for multiple regions, you know, hmm. but today DAB radio, even frequency, you know, they, 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 they are part of a standard. So you have to agree on certain frequency and all the things. But when it comes to online, all they have to care about how with the location, with the GPS location, automatically radio aggregator will publish the uh, uh, um, radio station which are localized. That's one example. Second one, 
is that if you are from France and traveling to uh, US and you want to listen to French radio online, it is possible. So that's another kind of user extending user experience. Uh, so the, these kind of scenarios are very much uh, into the play. One thing, other, other thing I would like to highlight, uh, audio we are talking about. So it's story, uh, for example, audiobook apps. So I can't take the names, but idea is that if audiobook app provider can get some data about the user journey, where he's going from point A to B mm -hmm. and how much time it is taking. If we share this information with uh, audio book, uh, they can actually propose a content to the, to the user, which will finish during that time of the journey. So these kind of small enhancement and close uh, collaboration, even when it comes to data sharing. So Huawei is practicing very much win-win situation, which it's not possible with other ecosystem today. Um, so these kind of small co collaboration with app provider, OEM and Huawei as a facilitator to join all the dots. Uh, we, we, we are really uh, working towards to provide more user uh, focused uh, uh, content and the apps uh, in our ecosystem. So this is something I wanted to ask you also, Daniel, because you are in between the car manufacturers and the uh, content owner and app aggregators. Uh, in terms of guidelines, do car manufacturers ask you very specific guidelines in order of what you're able to share with the content owner in terms of data, in terms of uh, ad insertion also? because you are in the process of uh, building the uh, Ignite platform in the car right now. Yeah, so, uh, so data, data is a very important point for the OEM. They want privacy. That's it. They don't want any, any personal information available. So what, what we're doing is delivering the data to the, to the OEM. The data is completely anonymized. And what, what we do is that we, we, we do provide, of course, data to the content provider and to the OEM on uh, number of installations, uninstallations, a uh, time the, the user is, is, is using the app, a region, location, and that's it. Uh, we, we are not uh, providing any, any other data. That's one of their most important uh, uh, requirements, actually. Uh, yeah, regarding data, you know, don't forget about we have to comply with GDPR regulation. It's quite heavy. So we do follow all this uh, as a part of a data sharing model. But idea is that willingness and uh, as a part of business model, uh, we do share, uh, allow data sharing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go on, Xavier. You wanted to ask something. Yeah, yeah we have, uh, um, I would say, close relationship with the uh, with, uh, owner of the content. And the only data we are sharing is also anonymous. And it's, um, we have an extra net, uh, a direct uh, interface for the, the content owner where they get their statistics, which is super important. They don't want to know if X or, or Y, Z person is connected. They just want to have stats to know how people are, are experiencing their content uh, in this new environment. So we are sharing that in every environment and for every partner. This is absolutely key. They eventually get a CRM, which is a tool where they can change their logo, they can add the new streams, etc. So, you know, we are as an aggregator, it's not our content. So our job is to bring new audiences, new environment for, for content owners, share it with them, respect their rules. If they, they don't want to, to be a abroad with uh, geo blocking, then we follow the rule and it will be only available on each, each country. So um, this, uh, I would say this relationship is very special and has been built since 15 years. is very important for them because aggregator could be their best friend in that kind of environment. We are not on the mobile where you can have thousands of, of applications. You know, in a car, there is no, no space for, for everyone. So aggregator should work in that way and develop this kind of relationship because otherwise, uh, you know, most of the radio station won't be there. 
Okay, so I wanted to move to another topic because as you said, you are not content owner and the three of you are in some extent here to help the content owner to be distributed directly to the user in the car. And in order to do that, we've seen that over the last year, there are two main access to the car. There is broadcast and there is IP. And as of today, the two of them are not matching 100% very well with each other. So I wanted to start with you again, uh, Xavier, because you are working closely with uh, those content owners, especially radio broadcasters. What has been the state of um, the hybridization of uh, IP and broadcast uh, over the last year? Is it a major issue for the content owner? And how are you dealing with the, um, the way of building a seamless experience to move from broadcast to IP in the car? So this is a very good question because like I said, we, uh, we are coming from IP world and we, <clears throat> we discovered a, a broadcast world. So our first uh, movement was to join the World DAB uh, because this groupment is very important because they, they want to find solution to make both an, an possible broadcast and IP. And they help us a lot to bring a, a hybrid solution. So for Android Automotive, we, were, we developed the first one uh, worldwide, a solution with uh, Panasonic in Germany. So Panasonic helped us to, to make the, the, the connection between hardware and we bring the, the front end, the software uh, um, interface. So there have been a lot of work because Android Automotive is brand new. There is a lot of constraints, but we did it. We, we made it work and we are also working with EDF, which is a French broadcaster uh, to develop seamless experience with their algorithm because there is a latency between the broadcast signal and the IP signal. The, the IP signal is late, maybe 10 seconds late. So for the user perspective, it's too much if you jump from one to another, but uh, with this algorithm, uh, there is less than one second, which is super cool. So our approach is to bring a, what we call full IP solution. So only online stream, like we do on mobile, etc., but also hybrid solution. So we see the, the OEMs, are, it, it depends. Some of them wants to have a, only an IP solution. Some are interested in a hybrid, but hybrid is more demanding because this, it needs this connection to hardware, to the tuner, the antenna. So it's more complex, you know, it's not just an app and that's it. So we, we have both solutions. And Daniel, from your point of view, because you're about to launch Ignite platform, um, what is the state, for instance, of broadcasting the app you are delivering? Are you focusing mainly on IP? Or for instance, know that the European regulations um, um, state that it's mandatory for OEM to implement DIB plus in the cars. Is it something that you're working with them or is it not a priority for them? And are you focusing, for instance, only on IP? What are you doing to provide a seamless experience? Okay, so, so for us, um, this is transparent because we are the distribution platform. When, when we're talking about hybrid radio, basically um, the requirements are, 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 are defined and, and, and developed between the content provider and the OEM. And the outcome or, or the app in this case can be handled and distributed via Ignite Store as, as any other uh, uh, app. So, for us, this is transparent. We are not directly re related at this point with hybrid ready. Okay, and I shift from uh, your perspective between China and uh, Europe. Um, have the European standards been challenged to integrate Chinese, um, the, the solution that you already implemented in China? How are you dealing with that, especially regarding the fact that you are doing uh, mainly mirroring from the mobile app to the car? Yeah, so a few things to note. Um, so why mobile-based solution or in-vehicle app is interesting, especially when anything comes with entertainment or stream is heavy data. So in China, connectivity, you know, going beyond uh, and very fast. So uh, the, the, the online content sharing and online uh, digitization is, I think, ahead now. And uh, so it's more in demand, uh, IP-based content rather than uh, offline. Uh, that's one thing. Other thing uh, we have to remember um, that OEM, when they launch the car, you know, if content is coming through the mobile phone and played uh, into the car, so high car especially has few things. So you can scale the, it's a scalable solution. So quality of the audio, 
you know that's important when you when you are streaming content uh, with dab radio localized this is the one of the challenge online quality could be scalable or lower or higher depend on the network situation so first of all um, we rely very much on to the mobile network so user uses its data contract and um, uh, and the speed whatever contract he has so in this case oem doesn't have to worry about uh, providing a data contract for in vehicle telematics or tele uh, communication so that, that's one part. And then, uh, you know, uh, scaling with high quality and uh, using data network from the user helps OEM a lot uh, to, 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 you know, to allow their user to use online content a lot. And in, in Europe, yeah, this thing, I don't know how this thing will turn out, but it really needs a strong networking infrastructure for connectivity. And I think 5G adaptation in Europe is not that fast. But uh, China already, you know, finished that 5G connectivity with lot implementation. So the, of course, car to X connection, car to or in vehicle uh, online or IP based uh, content and uh, app will grow faster and bigger uh, in, in China, no doubt in it. You mentioned something about the quality of audio. And this is something I wanted to ask you, Xavier, especially regarding the user experience. Uh, over the last year, we have seen that uh, the um, the audio sound system in the car have been increasingly performant, more state of the art, with better quality of song. But what about the encoding in itself? Because if we look at the content owners, it seems that there's still a gap between what's coming in terms of quality from the IP side and from the uh, broadcasting side. Um, do you think, Xavier, from the relationship you have with the content owner, there is still a bridge to gap to fill between uh, the quality of song provided by the IP versus what's coming from the broadcast side, or is it almost done already and the quality is sufficient? So I think there is uh, several parameters. The first one is the streaming platform now is almost at 360, you know, kilobyte per second, which is very high. And some of them are even uh, without any uh, <clears throat> uh, codec, you know, no compression and high res, uh, etc. So this is one part. So this pressure, we, we need to take care about that because again, there's, it's an ecosystem. Second part is um, data costs, you know, the bandwidth cost for, 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 for content owners, for radio station. So there are, you know, this balance between uh, we bring more, more quality, but it costs more. There is another element is the data plan of the user. Until now, most of the, the OEM rely on the on the mobile as a tethering, you know, connection, proxy connection. So the data plan is not unlimited for all the users. So we also have to take care about that. And uh, at Radio Line, we decided to ask different uh, URL with different level of encoding, starting to uh, <clears throat> 128, maybe sometimes lower or 256, et cetera. But we also created a catalog of 320 in MP3. So very good, good, uh, we, good station. So we call it uh, HQ, high quality. And there is more than 100 because, you know, we are partnering with many, many OEMs and, and, and people like the Violet for smart speaker, for example. The Violet is very, very high quality. So. We need to bring and show that radio station can be competing on the quality towards a streaming platform. This is super important. And for broadcast, the DAB is for the moment at uh, <clears throat> 92, so 92 kilobytes per second. So it's below IP. So what we see is that there is some OEMs on hybrid side that said, okay, it should be a DAB first and IP in backup. And some now is different. They are saying, because the, the end user is pushing for that, it's IP first and then DAB in backup. This is very interesting. So uh, we see that broadcast needs to improve its quality, its interactivity, its many, many things. If they want to be there in the, in the, in the picture, in the future. Uh, but for the moment, we we are flexible enough to, to follow the rule. So we put broadcast first, we can put IP first, we can put IP only. So uh, it's, 
it's really interesting because each OEMs have its own sensibility. Uh, and that's interesting because it's like reversing completely the way that we put how to distribute audio content in the car. So we have five minutes left only, and I wanted to go through two additional topics. I hope we will have time to do that. Uh, as we were talking about the user experience, there is something we haven't talked a lot of yet. It's the driver distraction in the car. Um, now we've seen that we have more uh, state-of-the-art screens in the car. We have uh, more uh, pushes coming from visual content and also more interactive screens, both on manual and voice control. Uh, Daniel, from your perspective, uh, how is about the guidelines, for instance? What are the OEM asking for you in terms of interactivity and in terms of how you could lower this driver distraction with Ignite? Yeah, okay, so, so, so basically I can say that this is one of the main reasons why there's uh, Android Automotive OS and not only using uh, systems like Android Auto or, or Apple CarPlay. Basically, basically the OEMs want to increase safety and to increase safety, you need almost a zero interaction from uh, the driver with the screens. And that's why uh, voice, in-car voice systems are are, are also increasing because the, the idea here is to, managing, to manage everything through voice comments without taking your hands off the wheel. And, uh, and in the other side, uh, Android Automotive has uh, some guidelines which uh, developers need to follow for when the vehicle is parking that you can allow everything or when it's idling or when it's moving that you can't allow any, any interaction. So, I can say that, that this probably is one of the biggest incentives uh, to, 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 to have Android Automotive OS, which is uh, driver safety, basically. And for you, Ashish, because you are coming from a mobile ecosystem first, how do you manage to provide a lower driver distraction? For instance, do you build a specific uh, service that works only for the car that is different from the mobile apps you have on the mobile phone? How are you dealing with uh, the guidelines as for that? Yeah, it depends on the app. Uh, for example, if gaming apps are there, you know, a user cannot play game while driving. <laughs> as simple as that. Then, uh, if, especially with audio apps, we have a template. Templates are color. So, so we control even colors, no flashing, no advertisement. Uh, visual advertisement, I mean, uh, we didn't talk about e-commerce, but no visual advertisements. And then uh, operations are very simplistic. One touch or, you know, um, uh, also Celia voice assistant is helping there. So, so I of a, of a driver should be on a road, not, you know, uh, most of the time. So uh, we, we, the button system, the approach, the, the layout, uh, all, all around driver safety. We do a lot of research on, on agronomics and driver uh, safety, and we implement those kind of user experience uh, into the design. That's, that, that's, the, that's how we control the design. And it's not very, it, there is a flexibility to adopt a certain modification uh, into the template, but not too much because of the same reason. That's how we control uh, driver safety. One more thing about user experience, especially in audio, you know, uh, your content, uh, Javier mentioned uh, different level of content, uh, IP content in terms of quality of audio. Uh, but in high car, we have an option. The user can choose a row stream if he has a high-end audio system in the car because not all cars have the same sort of audio system. Premium car will have a high-end. So he can choose the row streaming and the mixing and the channeling uh, will happen on the, uh, on the car audio side. But if car is not very high-end audio system, then the mixing and channeling and decoding could happen on the phone side to give the better, the best possible audio experience. There's something so, I wanted to ask you, Xavier, that Ashish mentioned is the e-commerce. And we haven't talked about the monetization opportunities for the audio in car. Um, we talked a bit uh, indirectly about advertising due to the fact that it's uh, very complicated to gather data and so to provide programmatic advertising in the car, especially with so many different actors. But what about e-commerce? How is it coming? Um, what is the state of e-commerce so far and uh, how can you, what kind of solution can you provide in the car regarding that? And I'll let you finish with that, Xavier. Yeah, I would say radio is a window open to the world. So in terms of uh, interactivity with advertising, I think it's the future. 
first of all. Second, uh, radio is talking about so many subjects. So if you got the metadata, which is the DNA of the system, then you can transact with that. If you are able to grab it, treat it, and make it available for, for the user. So this is exactly that kind of ecosystem that we are building. It's, it's an audio platform, I would say. And, and uh, that's, for us, this is the future because we, we didn't discover uh, the capacity of radio bringing more than just an information of entertainment. Again, it's a window on the world and uh, open to the world. And uh, yeah, we have the, the, the right partner to do that. But again, there is this restriction. So it's a combination of what could be achievable today. Tomorrow also, we, we are sharing roadmaps with our partner and, and for sure we'll have uh, more, more to say uh, very soon. Okay, so I think we are done. A lot of topic covered today. Uh, we have uh, 15 minute breaks and then we are coming back for uh, the last panel of uh, this morning, focusing on the audio streaming challenges in Europe. Uh, gathering one of the major broadcasters in Eastern Europe and one of the biggest market research company from Europe too, to talk about those challenges. Thank you very much for your time, guys. It was very insightful and uh, looking forward to seeing you on the next panel in 15 minutes. Have a nice day.